So I'm here in, uh, in uh, beautiful New Braunfels. New is Braunfels, that, Is yes. that how you say it? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm here with uh, Joe Marquez, and this is one of our newest shops. So uh, how are you doing today, Joe? I'm doing all right, Arthur. How are you? I'm doing great, man. So I came out here because I wanted to know uh, a little bit more about you. Um, okay. So I thought you could tell me your story and about how you came uh, to work here for 15 years. Okay. Uh, so I started in February 2003. Um, that was about 15 years ago I started here. Uh, we were originally in Shirts, Texas. Uh -huh. um, Started here as a helper. Okay. Uh, I came from doing commercial uh, before this, um, so it was my first time in residential. Okay. You know, uh, totally different. Sure. You know, um, so I was here as a helper. Um, How long were you a helper for? I was here as a helper for six months. And then you were a lead man. Yes, I became a lead man because that's when I got my license. Uh, okay. Since I had previous experience, I had enough hours to take my test and get my wireman's license. Uh, once I got my license, I became a lead man, started running my own truck. Awesome. So that I feel like that's a pretty quick transition from helper to lead man. Yes, why it you, was. Why do you think you were able to, to, to transition so quickly to a lead man? Uh, my opinion, I think, was the hard work that I was putting mm -hmm. into the company. Uh, I was willing to do anything and everything for the company and for the, my supervisor at that time. Okay. So uh, maybe what does a helper do and what does a lead man do? What's the difference so for those people who don't know? The difference um, is a helper obviously does all the you know, quote unquote, harder work. Okay. Um, they, they're basic, uh, basically required to clean out the truck, empty out the truck, uh, get all the material into the house, run extension cords, plug it in, get everything ready for the lead man. Okay. Uh, the lead man, while the helper's doing that, the lead man's inside the house, prepping the house. Okay. Where it's a rough end, you know, he's out there, you know, looking at the plans, marking it all out, you know, where plugs, switches, and lights are gonna go. Okay. Um, so basically, he's just prepping the house to get started on the job. Okay. And uh, how long were you uh, a lead man for? Uh, I was a lead man for about a year and a half. Okay. Uh, before I got the opportunity to be a supervisor. Awesome, man, that's, that's lightning fast. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what does a supervisor do? What, you, what were your job duties as a supervisor? Uh, supervising, um, I was in charge of uh, service techs under me mm -hmm. and uh, sub crews at that time, you know, to get jobs done. Um, one of my uh, to do's was I needed to make sure that my jobs were ready on time. Okay. Uh, to take care, make sure my crews had jobs on a, on a daily basis. Absolutely. Uh, make sure my service techs went in and, and got the job done as efficient as possible and take care of my customer. Absolutely. Uh, so you were a service tech for, I mean, sorry, you were a, uh, a supervisor, supervisor for uh, 12, 13 years or so? I was a supervisor for about, yeah, about 12 years, thir 13 years, okay. uh, before I got the opportunity to be a system manager. Uh, this is what I've been working here at IES, and you know, it. I think with all the hard work that I've done, I mean, it's, it's paid off, so I've got the chance, the opportunity to, to run a shop here in New Braunfels. Uh, but it's been challenging. Sure. You know, um, it's a whole different uh, side of the business. Um, you know, I started on the field, so supervising was more hands-on sure. field work. Uh, so that I knew. You know, mm -hmm. this this is a little new to me, so it's been a little challenging. What's, uh, what's the most challenging part? Uh, I think the most challenging part has been uh, our end of the month. Yeah. You know, every division, every shop has a... Um, you know, a number that we try to, to, to get to every month and, you know, to, to make the, the company, you know, profitable sure. and as well as the shop. And that's been, that's been pretty challenging to me, yeah. you know, learning how all that works and, you know, what the things you need to do right. in the office that, you know, yeah. help, you know, get, the, get you there. Uh, yeah, plus you've got to actually go out and, and uh, rough in some houses, right? Not yes, that. yes. Um, so one thing that's, that's unique about, um, about divisions is it's almost like running your own business. Correct. You know? Yes, um, it is. So I think that if somebody, for future electricians, if you're, if you're wanting to start your own business, this is a, a sort of a great combination between running your own business and having the, all the back office support of, of admin being able yes. to help you do all the things that you have to do. Yes. Um, Okay, so you're an assistant division manager, yes. and uh, your division manager is uh, Jordan, and I love Jordan. Jordan supports me in a lot of things I do, um, a lot of awesome things. So, tell me about uh, tell me about Jordan. Tell me about your history with him. Uh, Jordan Lyman, he is. Let me start off by saying he's awesome. He's great. Uh, he, I have had the pleasure of working with him. Uh, when he first got here, though, it wasn't the case. Okay. Um, so a little bit about that. He was here. He got here maybe about seven years ago. Sure. And my first impression when I saw him, I was like, man, this guy's so young. He looks like he's 12, yeah, you know? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, that was my first impression. And I just thought, man, 
and you know, really, what are we going to do with this guy here? I mean, does he even know the trade? Yeah. You know, but uh, he changed that that uh, perception of, of, from me of him, you know, and... Uh, what did he do to, to change that? Well, it was perfect uh, story that I, I, I'll tell you is that he called me one day and I was out in the field. He said, hey, this customer, you know, we have this issue with this customer. We need to get power to his house. They're doing a grand opening on our model. You know, we need to finish digging this ditch because the utility company doesn't want to do it. So I was like, yeah, okay, you know, whatever. It was about three o'clock in the afternoon. And I was like looking for it already, clock out, go home. But no, you know, we had to put in this, you know, this extra job for him uh, to get done. And yeah, we did. Me and uh, Robert, coworker of mine at the time, we were working together, and we started out there. What did you What did you have to do? So what we had to do was we had to get a trench going, a dig a trench from the transformer to the house, okay. and then we had to lay conduit and run some wire to get it cook, hooked up. You know, okay. get power on the house. Uh, the builder had already got his plumber to start the trench, and they did a decent job, but we had to finish it off. So what we did, we were out there digging, you know, seven yeah. and eight o'clock at night, you know, out there digging a trench to get this power on this house. And Jordan shows up, you yeah. know, he shows up with some Gatorades and some McDonald's, you know, some burgers and stuff. I mean, couldn't have shown up at a better time. Yeah. We were already hungry. Yeah. So we start eating, you know, taking some, you know, Gatorade and stuff. And next thing you know, I look back and Jordan's got a shovel in his hand digging the trench. Yeah. You know, and I was like, hey, hold on, man. You know, we got this. You don't need to, you know, get your hands dirty or whatnot. He goes, no, man, we need to, we need to make sure we get this done. Yeah. So, I mean, he went above and beyond, man. You know, grabbed the shovel, started digging. I mean, he stayed out there. We, we hooked up the conduit, ran the wire, hooked up the house, and we got it turned on. Yeah, and since that day, I mean, I have a whole different, you know, opinion of him. You know, he was not scared to work. Yeah. So I like this story because I think it, it talks about one of our core values, which is humility. So, yes. um, you know, even our division managers, um, they're not afraid to get their hands dirty Correct. To, to get out there and dig in a ditch. Uh, so I heard another uh, part of the story that uh, before Jordan got there, there was always the idea of, oh, we can do that tomorrow. You know, we can do that tomorrow. Yes. And so Jordan was like, well, I'm going to I'm going to stop that right now. And if we're, we can do it today, we're going to do it today. Yes. And so he's like, so I'm going to go get my gloves on and I'm going to get out there and I'm going to get dirty. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's been here for some reason. That's been everybody's mentality is tomorrow, tomorrow, yeah. mañana, mañana. And Jordan had a different uh, outlook on that. He's like, no, well, it's not tomorrow. It's, it's today. It's great. You know, so great. I mean, he's been great. He's been great to work for. So um, now. One of the one of, I'm a recruiter, so one of my challenges is finding people to, to be electricians. So I like to work with a lot of high schools. So if you could tell a high schooler out there, maybe graduating or maybe even your son, mm -hmm. um, to why they should uh, why they should come be uh, an electrician at IES, what would you tell them? Uh, I would tell them uh, opportunity. Opportunity does exist here. Uh, I'm testament of it, as well as all of our other division managers. Even the founders of our company, you know, they all started out as helpers. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, all of our division managers started out as helpers, um, you know, roughing in houses, trimming out. Same thing with our president. He started out 25 years ago as a, as a helper. Now he's the president of our company. Yep. So um, you're a great testament to it. And, um, and, you know, so is our whole company. So that's, that's, a, that's a great answer.